Hey guys, welcome back. So in a prior tutorial we had discussed transitioning between levels and today I want to revisit that topic a bit and go over level blueprints. So first, what is a level blueprint? According to Unreal documentation, a level blueprint is a specialized type of blueprint that acts as a level-wide global event graph. Okay, so what does that all mean and what do we do with it? Let's think of blueprints as a kind of pyramid. On the bottom, we have all of our instance actors, meshes, objects, widgets, lighting, etc. In the middle, we have things like class or parent blueprints, and sitting at the top of this pyramid is the level blueprint. Now, there are things above the level blueprint, but we don't need to get into that today. So now that we know what it is, where is this master blueprint hiding? If you guys will notice, if you right-click here in the content browser and try and search for a level blueprint, you won't be able to find one. And even if you go up here to Blueprint Class and try and type in Level Blueprint to create one, you'll see that it doesn't show up. This is not a Level Blueprint here. This is some tutorial. So how do we get to our Level Blueprint? Well, if you go up here to the top panel, you'll notice this tab here that says Blueprints. If we click on it, and you go down about halfway, you see this thing that says Open Level Blueprint. And when we click on that, you see we have this blank empty editor. This is the level blueprint. Now some of the nice things that we can do with the level blueprint, for example, any actor that we see in our level here, we can click on them and easily create a reference to it. So for example, I will click on our master enemy here and I can go back into our level blueprint and with the master enemy selected I can right click and see up at the top it says create a reference to master enemy. Now this works just like a cast node so had we casted to our master enemy and gotten a reference that way that would be exactly what this pin can do. So now we can access anything that's within our master enemy. So let's go into our master enemy click here and from within our master enemy I'm just gonna create a custom event. So I'll right click and type custom and we'll just call this magic. And what I'm going to do is take our mesh and I'm going to drag out and search for set world scale and I'm just going to scale this up by 5. So now I've created a custom event in our master enemy and I'm going to actually fire it off from our level blueprint. So if we right click here in the level blueprint we can search for begin play. The level blueprint has all of the same basic functionality of any regular actor blueprint. It has begin play, tick, overlap events, things like that. So off of begin play we're going to have a delay and we'll wait a couple seconds and now out of our master enemy reference we can now call that custom event, magic. And we'll hook these up like that. Compile and save. And now we'll hit play. And we'll wait. And now you see our master enemy has grown five times in size. Alright, so what else is the level blueprint good for? Well not only can you just make references to one actor here, you can, for example, select all of our nebula coins. If we hold control, we can select multiple. And we can go back into our event graph, right click, and you see it says create references to three selected actors. So we can click that, and these three references will come up. You can also right click, and you can call functions on selected actors. So say collision. Maybe we don't want collision to be enabled for these actors for a certain part of the level. So we can select this. You see it's automatically created the references again, so we don't need these. And we'll just say we'll leave this unticked, which means there won't be any collision enabled. So now if I hook this up after this, and we compile and save, if we hit play, see our enemy has grown. And now I'm going to come over here and try and collect our nebula coins. And you see the first one I could collect, but this one I can't. 
and I can't collect this one either because we've actually turned collision off on these three. So you're able to affect things like that from within the level blueprint. Now one of the issues with the level blueprint is it's kind of a one-way deal. It's like a river. It just flows in one direction. You can go in the other direction but it's really hard. You need to use things like event dispatchers and that's a topic for another tutorial. So a lot of the execution flow goes from the level blueprint to other actors, not necessarily the other way around. So if you're trying to have an actor communicate in the le to the level blueprint or to fire off an event from within the level blueprint, that's a little bit more challenging. It can be done, but that's probably not the best use of the level blueprint. Um, the, there are other blueprints that you can use that'll make that job a lot easier. So for the level blueprint, um, the big things about it are it's really easy to create references to any of your actors in the world. It's also a really easy spot if you want to just spawn things into your world dynamically. Um, you can put that here in the level blueprint without having to create a special spawning um, blueprint actor. Alright guys, I hope you thought that was helpful, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more tutorials. Alright, see you guys later.